Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the special meeting and public hearing for June 14th, 2022. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize this meeting is taking place on the traditional unceded territories of the Saminas people. And I know we're also grateful to live, work and play here. And with that, we will get underway before we move to adoption of the agenda. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda this evening, Ms. Smith? Yes, Mayor Stone, there was one late item of correspondence that was distributed to Council earlier this afternoon. We've also placed it on our website. Uh, so that will just be added to item 3.1. And it's a letter from uh, Ms. Plekas. Great, thank you. And accompanying photographs. Thanks. Uh, with that, we'll ask for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Moved by Councillor Stevens, seconded by Councillor Jacobson. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, motion carries. Uh, so that takes us to our public hearing for this evening. The public hearing is, this public hearing is convened pursuant to section 464 of the Local Government Act to allow the public to make representations to council regarding bylaws number 2102 and 2103. This public hearing is convened virtually pursuant to the Local Government Act. Everyone present will have a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaws. No one will be discouraged or prevented from making their views known. However, it is important that remarks be restricted to matters contained within the proposed bylaws. <clears throat> Members of council may ask questions following presentations. However, the function of council at a public hearing is to listen rather than to debate the, to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw. Once everyone has had an opportunity to speak, those who wish to speak again may do so. Once the public hearing is closed, no further submissions or comments from the public may be accepted by members of council. One written submission was received before noon today and was provided to council as a late item. Any written submissions received between noon today and the close of the public hearing will be read into the public record. Written submissions for bylaws number 2102 and 2103 can still be emailed to info at ladysmith.ca until the close of the public hearing. Please be advised that the public hearing will be recorded and live streamed, so your name, address, and comments will become part of the public record. If you would like to speak, please click the raise your hand feature in the webinar controls, and when it is your turn, you'll receive a prompt which will ask if you would like to be unmuted. Once you accept the prompt, you will be able to make your comments. Your video will remain off. If you have called in by phone only, you need to press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. Once you have finished speaking, you will be muted again. When speaking, please begin by clearly stating your name and address. I will now ask Senior Planner Christina Hovey to introduce the proposed bylaws. Ms. Hovey. Thank you. Um, the following bylaws are the subjects of this public hearing. Official Community Plan Bylaw 2003, number 1488, Amendment Bylaw number 70, 2022, number 2102, and Town of Ladysmith Zoning Bylaw 2014, number 1860, Amendment Bylaw number 47, 2022, number 2103. The bylaws apply to the property known as 1301 and 1391 Rocky Creek Road with the legal description, Lot A, District Lots 81, 86, and 98, Oyster District, Plan EPP 87265 with the PID 030-801-460. If approved, bylaws number 2102 and 2103 will amend the official community plan to change the land use designation from single family residential to multifamily residential, apply the multi-unit residential development permit area to the property and apply the hazard lands development permit area to the portion of the property near the water. And we'll change the zoning for the subject property from RU1, which is rural residential, and R1B, single dwelling residential, small lot B, to CD7, Comprehensive Development 7, Rocky Creek Road, mixed use residential to permit a mix of multiple unit townhouse and single detached dwellings, commercial and live work industrial uses. A number of conditions have been placed on the application and must be completed by the developer prior to final approval of the bylaws. Bear with me for a minute, there's a few. Um, 
registration on the property of a covenant or covenants, establishing a tree preservation area and tree management plan, requiring 5% of the parcel to be dedicated as a park, which will be located in the northeast corner of the parcel, requiring a 20 meter road dedication to provide public access to the harbor, limiting residential development on the property prior to the construction of some commercial units, requiring a community amenity contribution of $1,000 per additional unit permitted, as well as underground parking and energy efficiency standards, requiring that the developer decommission the 100 millimeter water main along the former Gliden Road, requiring that they construct a bus pullout lane for a transit stop along Rocky Creek Road, requiring that they provide a right of way for a path along the water and requiring that they upgrade the sewer main along Rocky Creek Road from Ludlow to the town boundary or postpone the development until the sewer is in place. And finally, requiring archeological protection. Notice of the public hearing, this public hearing was printed in the Lady Smith Chronicle on June 2nd, 2022 and June 9th, 2022 posted on the town's website and community notice boards and mailed and delivered to all properties located within 60 meters of the subject property. A copy of the notice, the proposed bylaws and background information was made available at the front counter of City Hall and Development Services and on the town's website for the duration of the notice period. Staff in the Development Services office have been available to respond to questions prior to the public hearing. And as of noon today, as noted previously, the town has received one written submission relating to the proposed bylaws. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holby. We will now open the floor to public submissions. I'm going to ask if the applicant wishes to make the first submission. Ms. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Seward, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Stone, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Stone and councillors for the opportunity to present to this uh, meeting. Uh, my name is Toby Seward, 1820 Argyle Avenue, Nanaimo, BC. I'm the agent for the owners and Frank Crucial will follow me up uh, from the ownership group. I've been working with staff uh, or we have been working with staff uh, for approximately the last 18 months. Uh, also, this name is First Nations, the archaeological branch, and uh, the neighborhood. We've had various consultants in, involved uh, through this process, and uh, councils uh, heard much of this at first and second reading, so I won't go over that in detail again. We're here to address, as noted uh, by Ms. Hovey, the OCP and rezoning amendment bylaws. We work with staff to uh, develop a, a CD zone, which will allow for a, a mixed use of single family dwellings, townhouses and multifamily, as well as commercial on the ground floor of some of the buildings on Rocky Creek Road. The key items, again, as Ms. Hovey has mentioned uh, for us in uh, discussing this file with staff is the waterfront park that's proposed at the north, uh, uh, northeast corner of the site. Uh, access to water, a sanitary sewer upgrade, and the tree buffers. Tree buffers uh, at the top of the site are approximately 15 meters wide and the lower half of approximately five meters wide. The reason that the, the difference in the depths is our consultant recommended that because the majority of the big trees are uh, on the top half of the property. APC was supportive of this development, uh, emphasizing the need for some commercial space and the tree buffers. We held two neighborhood information meetings uh, and uh, on site and uh, had a number of uh, the local neighborhood um, come and talk to us in that regard. Uh, they were quite interested in a tree buffer and fencing on the North property line. They raised traffic and parking uh, and density as issues they want to uh, see addressed. We've met individually with the two property owners who share the North property line with us and their concerns were again, tree buffers, privacy from the proposed waterfront park and uh, safety as the this site is developed out. We request the council support third reading of this OCP rezoning amendment and we will look forward to working with staff, this Nanemus and the neighborhood and our consultants to develop this property 
and certainly uh, are available to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you, Mr. Seward. Um, you indicated that Mr. Crusoe would be following you. Yes, that's uh, he was scheduled to do so, I hope. Uh, he doesn't seem to be in attendance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just wasn't sure if he was with you and going to speak through uh, through your login, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't appear that he's here. So um, okay. we'll move on then to the public submissions. Ms. Smith, I'm going to ask that you handle those because I cannot. Thank you, Mayor Stone. Uh, we don't have any emails to the info line this evening, and I don't see other hands raised in the gallery yet. Um, do we have anyone in attendance at City Hall? We do, and I'll, I'll find out if they'd like to speak. Hello, my name is April Robinson, and I live uh, 12385 Rocky Creek Road in Ladysmith. Um, our property is adjacent to the northeast corner of the development. So um, I just wanted to reiterate some of the concerns that we've already presented to Council in writing um, prior to any of your Council meetings, and basically um, I'm speaking for my, myself, my family, and several of the neighbors, and just reiterating what's already been sent. Um, Mr. Seward has already um, um, emphasized our main concerns, which is safety and the density. Um, it sounds like the, the buffer zone has been established between um, the Robinson property and the um, Scorvino a property that is just on the high side of our property. So the, uh, we are the only two properties that are adjoining this development. But many of the neighbors are concerned about the safety on Rocky Creek Road, um, especially with the the uh, density that that this will um, present. Uh, already on busy days, um, the traffic is, is dangerous because of all the parking on the street. So I hope as this development progresses, and I can see that it is a, a I can see it as a positive bonus for the town. Um, so we just want to strictly stick to the safety issues, and that is the traffic on Rocky Creek Road. Will there be a sidewalk in front of the property? It doesn't look like it is with the plans um, but I strongly hope there will be a sidewalk and that will limit parking on the um, east side of Rocky Creek Road. So there's designated parking on the west side, but with the parking on both sides of the road, especially with the big trucks and the RVs that are at the um, Arbutus business there and the increased traffic that will be coming to the new mall area, um, it's already a hazard, and when there's things going on in town like Ladysmith Days or the light up, <laughs> they're already the parking is already down to our driveway. So I can't imagine when you had another 300 residences with probably another 400 cars. Um, I would strongly urge that you not change the bylaw with the designated parking that's allotted to each unit. I would strongly urge that a sidewalk be put in to limit the parking on the east side of Rocky Creek Road. And you already have the submission from Mrs. Plekas about her concerns at the north end of Rocky Creek Road that exits onto the highway. Um, um, you, Mr. Seward's already addressed our concerns about a fence, so we're hoping that a fence will go up prior to any of the development. Um, um, the area that is being developed in the past has had um, unsheltered encampments there, and we've had multiple thefts and vandalism done to our property already, so um, we're hoping that there will be some kind of a barrier between us and the development. 
I understand in the past that one of the council members had asked for an updated traffic impact report. I hope that has been done and will be reviewed. The one that I reviewed was quite outdated and was taken at, at the least opportune time to judge the, the um, flow of traffic. And, and I just want to remind people that Rocky Creek Road is the only other way if there's a highway accident and the traffic is backed up, that is the only way around. Um, and I think at least twice over the last year, that road has been needed because of a helicopter landing on the highway and then the traffic has to get rerouted. So... Um, that mostly is what I wanted to speak to about the, um, the um, safety issues. The other issue that I would like to talk about is the park that's being proposed. I understand that, again, it's a waterfront access. We have no control over it. But I don't see the need to have steps going down to the beach at the northeast corner, which would be right adjacent to our property and right in behind our boathouse. Um, we've already had incidents where the RCMP have been involved with people with theft from the boats at the marina and they come ashore. The last two were at Harborview Road. This would be an even more secluded place for, for somebody to come aboard and if there's parking at the park, I can see um, issues arising with um, if there was more thefts and and it seems that Lady Smith in general is having an increased number of thefts over the last few weeks and months what I've been reading on Facebook. So if the steps are going in, I would strongly urge it to be closer to the marina where where there's more lights and the lights from the mill that would be more protective of that um, entryway from the water. And um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Great, thank you so much, Ms. Robinson. Oh, could I just add one thing? I, I, I just want to make sure that the um, community plan is followed. I know you're, we're, there's talk of, of um, reducing the number of parking spots per unit. I hope you won't do that. I strongly hope you won't do that. And I also, um, I know it's probably not even worth saying, but I wish you would follow the community plan and stick to the four stories. But that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Next, Ms. Smith. None. So I'll ask a second time if there are any more submissions for bylaws 2102 and 2103. I think we have Ms. Muller. Uh, Ms. Muller, you are able to speak now. Please go ahead. Hi, my name is Rachel Muller. I live at 12425 Rocky Creek Road. Um, we are one of the, not original residents, but our home is one of the original houses on Rocky Creek Road and consequently is just meters from the road. My concern is safety, especially for um, my own teenagers and the other teenagers that I see walking past my house on the way to school. The traffic already, um, particularly coming from the mill, can go at extremely high speeds. There is a sign which says that trucks are not supposed to travel on this stretch of Rocky Creek Road. Trucks travel regularly, regardless on this stretch of road. Um, so I have seen in the, the notes uh, that there will be provision or recommended provision for sidewalks in front of the development, but my safety concern is beyond the development where we actually leave the town of Ladysmith. There's a narrow margin beside the road. There are teenagers walking from all the way to the very end of the road. And it's already somewhat sketchy with the traffic that we currently have. I just want to know what would be put in place, what kind of 
traffic calming um, or would a sidewalk extend to the end of Rocky Creek roads to make it pedestrian safe? Okay, thank you. Anything else? And that was it. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, um, my husband's here as well. Go ahead, Vern. Uh, I'm hi. Thank you for for hearing me. Um, some some time ago, when they were building this uh, this side access road, um, they routed the highway down and brought the traffic from the highway uh, down Rocky Creek Road. And the the highway department, I think, tried very hard to accommodate residences. Um, they, they posted a restricted speed zone through the area. Uh, they tried very hard to make sure that there was good access and, and sight. But with that increased traffic, it became uh, very difficult to get in and out of, um, out of our homes. And so when I read the, the proposed scope of the, uh, of the development and the number of, of residences to be added, I'm concerned about the amount of traffic traveling back and forth on the road. And I'm not sure that Rocky Creek Road is really, um, is able to handle that kind of traffic on a sustained basis. Uh, quite aside from the concern that was raised uh, when required the highway traffic is routed through Rocky Creek Road. I'm just not sure that this, this uh, piece of pavement is capable of handling that much traffic. And I wonder if it mightn't be reasonable to, uh, to um, look at what, is, what the traffic capacity is and then to, to use that uh, when looking at a final approval on the number of, uh, of residences to be built. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. So we'll call for a third and final time if there are submissions for more submissions for bylaws number 2102 and 2103 for 1301 and 1391 Rocky Creek Road. And so folks understand I take notes so that's why I'm looking at my paper just making sure I try to capture as much as I can of the feedback. Seeing none. I will turn it back over to you, Ms. Smith. Are there any written submissions that have arrived late to be read into the record? Uh, there were no late submissions received other than the one circulated previously from Ms. Pluckus. Great, thank you. And with that, the public hearing for bylaws number 2102 and 2103 is now closed. No further input or submissions can be provided to council and these bylaws are on tonight's special council meeting agenda for further consideration. I'm just moving back to my regular agenda. And with that, I'm just gonna get organized here. That leads us to the bylaws portion of our meeting this evening. So the official community planning and zoning bylaw uh, official Community Plan Bylaw 2003, number 1488, Amendment Bylaw number 70, 2022, number 2102. And the recommendation is that subject to any additional matters raised at the public hearing, Council give third reading to Official Community Plan Bylaw 2003, number 1488, Amendment Bylaw number 70, 2022, number 2102. I'll go to Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I was then able to download the uh, latest item and the photograph. Can you read into the minutes that um, letter from Ms. Blackus as to what it said? Because I, I can't read it. You're unable to read your email? Yeah, it just, when I tried to download it, it just, uh, nothing happens. Okay. Um, I had to read it a few times because it was handwritten. Um, Ms. McCarrick? I believe it is on the website, is it not, Donna? If you go to the website, you would be able to see it there as well as the public would be able to. Well, I'll go on with the discussion, Councillor Johnson. And if you're unable, you have to understand that we've closed the public hearing. So that now, now for, but uh, we'll give an opportunity for other councillors to speak and I'll come back to you if you're able to uh, find it. I've got Councillor Vertanen and then Patterson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I will speak in a second, but I had the same problem as Councillor Johnson did. 
I couldn't get it on my phone, but when I went on the tablet, I, I could I could see it. So I don't know if that helps him. Okay. See if he can get it while we're going to the next speaker, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, page seven, the uh, of the uh, Town of Lady Smith Zoning Bylaw 2014, number 186, sec section 17.7. Under principal uses, there all the the and i think it's i know what the answer is i think it's probably just a mistake but just wanted to check a and g aren't italicized like the others is that just a mistake or is there something special about those two uses through to staff um through the mayor in general the italicized uses are ones that have a definition in the bylaw and so if they're not italicized, that likely means they're not defined in the kind of front end of the bylaw. Um, I can I can double check that in this case since I, I don't have that um, memorized. Okay. Because um, one artist studio and another one is cottage industry. I would think cottage industry, we should have some kind of a definition for it. Well, she's looking up that uh, item M, non-motorized recreational equipment sales or rental. What are e-bikes classified? Uh, are they motorized? Because I would think, uh, personally, I would think that with the desire to get off um, uh gas engines etc cetera, etc cetera, and the popularity of e-bikes and the environmental uh, uh, savings that they have i would think that that should be a use that we would encourage through the staff uh through the chair i can take this one while this hubby checks the zoning bylaw uh <clears throat> for the e-bike uh use that likely would qualify as non-motorized uh, recreation. Um, we would probably apply the Motor Vehicle Act standard for motorization of a bike. So once the output power exceeds a certain amount, it becomes a motor vehicle. Uh, so most recreational or e-bikes that you would buy today would be, um, would be uh, classified as non-motorized. What wouldn't be classified as non-motorized would be like a uh, an electric dirt bike um, or something like that. That would something that would ex would exceed the thirty-two kilometer threshold or whatever thirty-two kilometers per hour. Yes, or something you could do jumps on or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Because some e-bikes uh, advertise that they do forty kilometers an hour. Not legal under present laws in the province, but that might be getting changed. Okay. Okay. Thank. So e-bikes would, would be a go. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Hovey, do I go back to you about the italicized? Um, sure, um, through the chair, uh, Councilor Patterson is correct and those are defined uses. So we can, uh, we can modify that through the bylaw review bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. So Councilor Johnson's on his phone during a council meeting. That's a new twist, getting tech support, perhaps. Um, anyone else wish to speak? I saw Councillor Stevens getting ready to put his hand up, but I did see Councillor Mackay's hand. So I'll go to Councillor Mackay and then Councillor Vertanen, and I'm still waiting for a full hand from Councillor Stevens. Thank go ahead, you. Councillor Mackay. Thank you. Um, the um, a question regarding the, the placement of the stairs down to the beach, to be perfectly honest, when I thought about the stairs going down to the beach, my thought was for people to access the beach for recreation. It wasn't at all about the possibility of security with someone coming in off the water and perhaps with nefarious intent. So is there a reason why the, um, the uh, steps to the beach are in the location they're in? And, in? and the other side to that would be, is it possible for them to easily be moved to the other side, closer to lighting in the marina? I'll put that through to staff. I have some thoughts on that, but I'll put it through to staff. 
Sure. Um, we could revisit the location of the park in the stairwell. That location was specified because the grades of the site make it difficult to place the stairs in other locations. And since the goal of the park is to actually provide that access to the waterfront, we wanted to make that as feasible as possible. Um, one other note I'll add is that although that area is secluded right now, um, the intent of these bylaws is to develop that area and it will be a very different environment than it is currently. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I saw that the director of parks and recreation is here as well and he may want to chime in. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hovey. Through the chair, the only comment I have, uh, Councillor Mackay, is that within the, the the area that we've defined as possible park is we could align the stairs not directly against the property. They could be aligned anywhere along that waterfront. Um, we did designate sort of that area as a suitable spot for stairs. The specific location, we can probably look at adjusting that, creating that buffer. And follow up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the um, information. And uh, my, my next question was with regard to the traffic study. Can I have a reminder as to what the date was on the traffic study that was done for Rocky Creek Road? I'm getting hand signals from somebody. <laughs> any, any? So through the chair, um, the original traffic study was done in 2020, late 2020. I'm just checking the date, June 2020. June 11. Um, and there was an addendum to that, which was completed more recently in uh, February of 20, or sorry, January of 2022. January 2022, so that's quite that's current. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Vertanen and then Stevens, and then I put myself on the list. Anybody else? Got Councillor Johnson. Go ahead, Councillor Vertanen. A uh, quick question. Well, I don't have a question actually, it's more of a comment. Is this the right time to do it on the general topic or should I move it first? No, go ahead, whatever you feel is necessary, but uh, well, I've, I've got the list of some responses to some of the public input here, uh, public hearing input, but I'll wait till councils have their opportunity to speak. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I would, okay, I'll start there. I would like to thank, and sorry if I get the names wrong, but I think it was the Mullers, Ms. Robinson, and Ms. Plekis. Thank you for reaching out. Um, I wasn't totally clear on the traffic is dangerous part. Was it a speed thing they were concerned about? The road itself seems plenty wide enough. Um, if it was a speed thing, well, I think we can tackle that in different ways, whether police or citizens on patrol. So I don't, I wasn't quite sure on that. I do thought about the steps on the beach and Christina actually touched on that. I think with there being a lot more people down there, I actually think it would be a lot safer security wise than it would be in current terms. Um, I don't have a lot to say, um, short of, um, I love this. I, I've loved this idea from the beginning, but I was waiting to hear feedback from people on the, only negative, and I just use that in quotations because I did hear, uh, I think it was Ms. Muller say that she saw the positives um, in this as well. That might have been actually Ms. Robinson. Anyways, um, everybody I've talked to thinks it's a great idea. I think it's a once in a generation opportunity, not just for that part of town, but for our town in general. I empathize, I want to be good neighbors with people who are outside our catchment area, of course. Um, but I love it. So I'm going to, I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stevens and then Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you. So I'm going to jump around my notes a bit here, but uh, I'll, I'll check off the things that have already been mentioned. I, I concur with, uh, with the senior planner and, and Councillor Vertanen that the, um, the number of people, um, people are the best and cheapest form of security out there. So uh, the, the park, I don't think will be an issue as the build out occurs because uh, you'll have uh, hundreds of approximate neighbors. Um, so uh, the, as I recall, the stairs 
uh, the, the, the hazard lands get easiest uh, the further to the north and east you go. So um, again, uh, talking about the, the, the um, safety in the park uh, being mitigated by numbers of people living there, I don't, th I don't think I would uh, want to um, make extra build cost First, a problem that might very well go away over time. Uh, the notion, the topic of sidewalk was covered, uh, the traffic study, how recent it was. I will uh, note, and while I have my misgivings with traffic, recent activities of traffic engineers, I know they're good at counting cars. So, um, and that gives a 20 year uh, post development level of service still in the A's, primarily in the A's and, and some B's. So I don't think there's a pro an issue with volume of traffic on the road. Um, I would think though that there are things we're, we're going to have to do to mitigate speed um, with that volume. Um, and I note that the, the sewer line that's going to have to be replaced or waited for, um, maybe there's an opportunity at that point to talk about active transportation for that e-bike shop that Councillor Patterson sees down there. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but I, I certainly think it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a close to straight very wide piece of, of road. Um, great for traffic volumes, but great for speeding. And you could put a 30 kilometer sign every 10 feet and people would still do the speed they feel comfortable on. So um, I, I, I think and hope there's an opportunity when the work is going on in the roadbed to maybe do something there. Um, perhaps I, I mentioned before committing the amenity contribution or part of it that's coming from the project to that. Uh, but other than that, I think the, the, the development is solid. It's, it's addressed so many of the issues that potentially could come from it. There's unforeseen, th unforeseen things always, but um, in general, I think I'm, I'm quite supportive. Uh, the, the, I would note the, the pictures we got today, they're, I think they're a separate problem, but, uh, but nonetheless uh, a related problem. And I think some enforcement and reminding folks along those um, industrial properties that they have somewhere between 20 and 65,000 square feet of uh, property on their lot to park cars uh, will go a long way to to uh, mitigating that. It's it's unacceptable. Uh, I, I will note that, that to have trailers and stuff out on a public road like that. So thank you for the submissions and I'll, I'll, I'll move on on the speakers list. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I've got three or four points I'd like to address. First one was usually when uh, there's public hearings run by the uh, developer or proponent, we get copies of their comments in a summary. I don't see anything in regards to the presentation tonight as to the summary of those meetings. Those were all provided before second reading was given at council, Councillor Johnson, as, as per usual. Okay, uh, would it be nice to have them again? Uh, Anyways, the second thing is the sign uh, by there shows a uh, work live industrial. When I look under permitted uses, I don't see industrial. Uh, what is happening here? Are we going to allow live work industrial there as per the sign or what? Uh, Ms. Hovey or Mr. Bellobaba? Ms. Hovey, I'm sorry, I just keep saying it wrong, but please go ahead. Thank you, through the chair. Um, so the live work industrial uses are an additional permitted use only on the portion of the property facing Rocky Creek Road. Um, so you do have to read down to um, a later portion of the bylaw um, where you see figure 17.7 and that references what number? the- 17.7 .7, the figure at the very end on page 10 of 11 of tonight's agenda on the last page of the proposed zoning bylaw and what we've done is we reference the existing live work industrial zone so um so you would then if you were to propose a live work industrial use in that location you would be referencing the provisions of of that zone okay thank you the other question I have is regards to traffic study. If I remember correctly, the traffic study was only down at the corner where Ludlow uh, joins Rock Creek by the home hardware. Has there ever been a traffic study at both ends of Rock Creek Road? 
because I'm very concerned or curious about the amount of traffic going to the highway at the north end, especially when those people are getting back home and making a left-hand turn across the highway. So our traffic study, does that give us an indication at that end of Rocky Creek Road? Ms. Hovey? Through the chair. That was the, the subject of the addendum that was completed in February, sorry, January of 2022. Um, however, it did focus on north going traffic. Um, so you, um, you could, you could extrapolate from that, but it, it doesn't directly discuss the left-hand turns. Um, and then to your point about what intersections were covered besides that north intersection and the Ludlow Road intersection, it also speaks to the access roads into the property. And that's the extent of the study area. May I ask a follow-up question with regards to traffic? Go ahead. How are we prepared if the rest of the property, which is presently owned by uh, Obey Marine Group, wants to become residential. And I am looking long-term that the potential of the sawmill leaving and that's that land becoming available for residential. Do we have the infrastructure to accommodate these future demands? I know it's not happening now, but it, I'm bet a dollar to a donut that's going to happen in the future. Uh, who would like to try and address the crystal ball? Mr. Boma, you popped up. Uh, through the chair, I, I, I popped up because I believe the question is about infrastructure, if I'm not mistaken. Roads, roads and infrastructure. For example, if the property, property that is not under development at this point in time, but is owned by Opium and Green Group, group. If they decide to do a like project, can our roads handle it? If the sawmill uh, decides to leave in 25 or 30 years, will our roads handle it? Because I see a whole series of high rise tower condos there. In my crystal ball. Mr. Boma. Okay, through the chair. Um... I, I would have to suggest that uh, staff would request a, another traffic study if those rezoning applications were to come in because we don't really have the answer to that. The traffic study would have been limited to the definitions of this development itself. So, so in essence, just to, for clarity, any, any further change to those uses would require rezonings and therefore traffic studies and infrastructure studies would be done at that time. Yeah, thank you. That's correct. Okay, my last comment at the moment is I went down there today to try and find the access down to the beach and it was extremely low tide. And I can't see um, who would be wanting to use that beach area. So the question I have, is it possible before we adopt this motion that it, the proposed park area be taped off so we can actually see the train we were talking about because I was trying to estimate it and I didn't make sense to me. In addition, if we are going to take the serious park, how much is going to cost to bring it up to a standard that we would want for public use in a safe and effective manner and who would pay for that? So dollars and responsibility. Thank you. Uh, who on staff wants to try and take that one? Uh, I see Mr. Bellababa, and I did see Mr. Barfoot pop up, but you go first, Mr. Bellababa. Uh, just a comment on uh, bringing parks to a standard for public use. Um, the cost for that is effectively zero dollars. We have no obligation to develop parks simply because we have it. It can stay as wooded area as long as we like. Um, uh, the only thing uh, that is required is uh, bare, and I mean absolutely bare minimum monitoring requirements to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, like a walkthrough once or twice a year to make sure something uh, is terrible isn't happening down there or something like that. Um, so that would be the 
Um, this is a rezoning stage. This is simply securing the acquisition of the land. There is no obligation at all for the town to develop it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Barfoot, did you want to add anything to that? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Through the chair, I think the, the Director of Development Services answered that question very well. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Johnson, I'll come back to you. You've had a good run at this, this uh, first round. Um, so I just wanted to address a few of the comments that I heard during the public meeting and, and largely been addressed by other councillors' comments or staff comments. Um, the safety and density um, issue kind of go hand in hand. Um, most studies will show that with density comes more oversight, more people leads to less um, uh, hidden activities, if you will, because there's less space to be hidden and uh, to, to um, conceal your efforts to do nefarious things. Um, the, the traffic issues, um, uh, well, speak about the parking issues first, um, specifically about Ms. Plekis' uh, submission. Um, ironically, Ms. McCarrick and I had a discussion about this uh, last week and then uh, earlier this week. Um, there is enforcement issues and bylaw violations currently, currently happening along Rocky Creek Road. And I think that over the time, um, there's been such a lack of development. The, the visions for the Rocky Creek Road area weren't quite recognized um, in the initial wave of development. And therefore, some bad habits were developed along Rocky Creek Road, including the east side parking. Um, parking of unattached trailers, um, storage of uh, what they call marshalling of trailers and other things in adjacent properties, either by permission or just by convenience. Um, and absolutely, we'll have to step up both our enforcement, um, not um, just sort of communicating out to the, the businesses and residents along that road about the parking provisions that are already in place, the requirement to provide staff or resident parking on site and encouraging them to use it. And then therefore, after that point, um, looking towards enforcement. Other things like increased level of maintenance along Rocky Creek Road will need to become the norm, but those costs would be supported by the tax revenues that would be generated from a development like this. So hopefully those additional employees on the horizon don't cause too much uh, concern when we do have the required uh, the requisite number of bylaw enforcement and maintenance staff to make sure that Rocky Creek Road lives up to the standards of the town. Um, but that is and will be addressed. Um, the speed issue, when I first got elected, I think the first scandal on Facebook was that I sped down Rocky Creek Road because as many of you know, I live at the terminus uh, just down on the end of Lipton Road. So my son has traversed uh, that roadway uh, almost daily for the last 10 years that we've been here. And I have shared the speed concerns and the safety concerns at times, um, specifically with the mill traffic, because after I was uh, sort of flagged for inadvertently, like Councillor Stevens said, speeding along that road, it was the design of the roadway just it gives itself to a nice freewheeling coast uh, as you passed through Emadil. Um, I started to become very wary and mindful of my speed, seeing that on that side of the road anyway, going northbound, the speed limit reduces to 40 to provide uh, extra comfort and safety to the residents that have driveways along that side. <clears throat> and uh, often find myself tailgated, honked at, um, surged at um, by uh, different vehicles, particularly uh, during shift changes. Um, so that's another awareness piece that we'll need to work on and an enforcement piece like there's laws in place um, through the corridor along the Ladysmith portion. Of course, there are things we can do with active transportation, road treatments, et cetera, to mitigate traffic speeds. But beyond the town of Ladysmith, the Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure is responsible for those road designs and implementation of safety measures. Um, and I will note that part of the motions this evening is to refer this uh, proposed development to the Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure for feedback, um, and they would address at that time concerns with, um, you know, traffic capacities at intersections and roadways, and they may prescribe their own upgrades in time to um, rectify those issues. So that should be dealt with in time and being mindful that and a zoning approval doesn't result in instantaneous development and build out. 
Um, this happens over time and at certain trigger points, Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure and our infrastructure staff may deem that it's necessary to do upgrades that would slow or mitigate traffic speeds um, while being able to maintain flows in terms of uh, potential highway bypass in times of emergency. Um, Park locations already been addressed. I think staff worked really hard with the proponents on the location of the park being that it was the highest value portion of the property for park use. Um, what the future of that park might look like would be a good engagement process for our staff. They just rushed here this evening from an engagement uh, with community on the Brown Drive Park uh, further developments or Kinsman Park, Councillor Patterson, uh, at Brown Drive, the hilltop, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so those things happen again in time and with consultation with community and neighbors on what the best use for that parkland might be, but it's absolutely necessary to have a park uh, with waterfront access, I believe, at the northern end of the community because beyond Transfer Beach and the government docks, there is no public access, um, although there is, I think, one at the end of Harborview Road just past there, um, but it's not really built out or accessible in, uh, in the ways that I think we would hope. And also, I don't think we want close proximity to the traffic at the marina, the noise, the smells, or the mill for a park space where it's meant for relaxation and people's enjoyment. Um, so although I do want us to respect the concerns of the immediate neighbor with the park, I think that that can be decided in time with consultation with community, uh, professional parks plans, and uh, engagement with uh, neighbors. Um, the other issues, I think, um, around traffic are more of a question of enforcement, things like signage and awareness building, as well as whatever mitigation we can provide over time on the town side, and hopefully working with MOTI on the uh, CBRD side in terms of what mitigations might be necessary. Um, so I think that really covers it from my perspective. Um, and I will share um, the general positive um, view of the development. I think it's a it's a multi-use um, site that seems to fit very well with the foreshore uses of the marina. Um, it only makes, uh, I think, sense in terms of what kind of development you would hope to see there uplands from uh, the most major marina in our area. And hopefully the at least somewhat understood plans of the adjacent property uplands from the, the um, marina and mill directly um, would be the light industrial uses that would support the marina such as harbor, uh, such as boat works and uh, chandlery, that kind of use, uh, light industrial use that would be compatible as a good buffer between the heavy industrial use of the mill and the residential commercial use and light industrial use at the property. So I will also be supporting the motions that are before us this evening but I would go for a round two if uh, other councillors feel the need to continue or a motion if uh, a councillor feels the need to move the motion. So I'll go to Councillor Johnson and then Councillor Patterson. Thank you. As I say, I went down there today to take a look at the, the site and I couldn't quite define the area that we are talking about. All I saw was very, very steep bank and mud flats. Um, I would certainly appreciate it if before we do an adoption, it can be marked off so that all members of council can go down and get a, uh, a good view of it because I don't really have the feel of the area because I don't see something that would make a great park with the mud flats and the uh, floats from the marina out 150 yards um, it's because it's a, a bit of a channel. I don't see where people swim or I don't see how people come by boats. I do see the idea that was presented part of it is the walkway along the waterfront going back with 10 or 15 feet with benches for views or something, but that makes more sense to me than the vertical cliffs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go to Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to move the uh, Recommendation uh, 4.1. Thank you. And do we have a seconder? Councillor Vertanen, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. The motion carries. Moving on to item 4.2 Town of Ladysmith Zoning Bylaw 
2014, number 1860, amendment bylaw number 47, 2022, number 2103. The recommendation is that subject to any, ooh, this is doing this thing again. Ms. Smith, you're gonna have to read the resolutions because unfortunately I only get the first four or five words of the resolution before it's cut off. Uh, the resolution reads that council give third reading to town of Ladysmith zoning bylaw 2014 number 1860 amendment bylaw number 47 2022 number 2103 and direct staff to refer bylaw number 2103 to the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure pursuant to section 52 of the Transportation Act. Thank you. And do we have a mover and a seconder a moved by Councillor Vertanen, seconded by Councillor Patterson discussion on the motion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, motion carries. So that takes us to the end of our public hearing and special council meeting for January 14th, 2022. And I believe Ms. Smith, that takes us to adjournment. All right, thank you. I'll call a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Stevens, seconded by Councillor Mackay. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you all for attending this evening and thank you all for your input and feedback. I hope we are able to show that we've addressed the concerns and we'll continue to focus on those concerns as we move forward. Thank you, have a good night.